Hey everybody, Northwood Janky here, born and raised in the North. I've decided to do my channel based on everyday things that I do, uh, normal life for me. So give me some time. Uh, this is not a full-time job for me like it is for some people. I put my stuff up and make my recordings uh, as time allows. Um, things I'll be doing and things you'll be seeing if it interests you is we're going to be swinging chainsaws, doing radio stuff, uh, jarring and canning, home repairs, welding, tractor work, uh, vehicle repairs, running sawmills, and a wide variety of things. Um, that's just what we do up here. So if these things interest you, check things out, follow me, and uh, hit subscribe, hit that like button, drop comments, feel free to ask questions. So with that, take it easy. So yeah, if you're running a outside boiler, it's a little windy. You don't want this thing shutting down for any length of time. Because you don't want the pumps to shut down. You don't want anything to be able to start freezing up. You don't want the lines in the ground to be able to start freezing up. So these don't draw much electricity at all. This one at best draws, I think, two and three quarter amps when the draft door is open. So yeah, you can run it on a battery, inverter, <clears throat> a little generator, but if you don't know the power's out, then how do you know you need to have backup power going? So it's one in the morning, 20 below zero and the wind's screaming, power goes out and you don't figure it out for four hours, you're going to have a problem. Or you go to work, same thing. So having an automatic transfer switch to switch it over to a backup supply that will get you by for a few hours is a pretty good idea. So let's get into that. The wood boiler outside, you don't want the power going up to that thing for very long especially when it's bitter cold. So if it's midnight and you're sound asleep and the power goes out and for whatever reason you don't realize it, um, pumps stop spinning and water stops flowing and you could have a freeze up and things are going south from there. So for several years I ran a little 12 volt backup system that I built. I don't have the batteries here, but. I just had some Napa 12 volt deep cycle batteries and I used a Prologix battery charger. You could see the state of charge of the battery and you could see the battery voltage changing it um, here. You could toggle back and forth. Had that connected to the batteries. Then I had a, oh I've had this thing forever, regular old 1500 watt 12 volt inverter, the AC side um, was where the boiler plugged in, but I didn't want to run the boiler off the batteries all the time. So I made a transfer switch. So let's see, find the writing on the plugs here somewhere. There we go. You've got two plugs. One says grid, one says battery. So the grid one plugged into an outlet. It was grid outlet. The battery one was the one that was plugged into the inverter. Like that. So battery power from the batteries to the inverter. Then from the grid. So if the grid went down, this one lost the power. What would happen is... This double pole, double throw relay here, you see how it moves? As long as it, there was grid power, the electromagnet held it down in this position. All right. And it put it out to this outlet right here. So when the grid went down, the electromagnet lost its electricity. So it would spring up to that position and it would pass the current through coming from the inverter. That's what all this wiring is over here. 
So that was a cheap crude homemade automatic transfer switch and it worked good. This never let me down. Of course, running 12 volts, it takes more amps to run a load. For some reason, the inverter and the charger didn't really like each other. So the charger would cause the inverter to fault out. You get a red fault light. So when it would fault, it would shut down. Other times what would happen is this thing would get EP on the display and it wouldn't charge the batteries. So I was always constantly having to check this and check this to make sure it was working right and come out and reset the inverter. So it was going to be a real hassle. And if that happened in the middle of the night when it was really cold and I didn't know about it, we could have some major problems here. So I finally got the money together and decided I had to upgrade. So we'll show you what we did. So the new 24 volt system I put in. I've got a 24 volt battery bank up there. Six volt batteries, four of them. Then got a pulse width modulated solar charge controller, which is not hooked up to panels. I'm just using it as a voltage monitor. So we've got 25.4 in there right now. It's dropping a little because I disconnected the grid. This is a 24 volt magnum energy inverter charger. So what that means is when the grid is up, this will charge battery bank. These wires go up and connect to the battery bank up through the deck there. It'll keep it charged up. As soon as the grid drops out, the inverter takes over and starts drawing from the batteries like it is now. So there's the automatic transfer switch now. So just a second, I'll plug it back into the grid. So let's see, this wire right here goes over and plugs into a grid outlet. And I put a plug on it so that if the grid is down for a long, long period of time, two or three days, because of a bad storm, I can run a generator. And that's all I have to do to charge my batteries and run the wood boiler. Now you see the voltage has gone up. It's probably gonna go up a little bit. There we go, still increasing. That's because I plugged the inverter back into the grid. So now it's in charging mode, topping the batteries off and it'll take care of that all by itself. So now it's a much simpler system running 24 volts. So it's not going to draw nearly as many amps as the old 12 volt system.